Hello, hello, hello. Eric Darling here with Eric Darling Data. And uh, I know that it's been a little while since I recorded anything. That's mostly because I've been really busy. Uh, I've still been writing nice things for all of you kind and pleasant folks out there. But uh, recording, I don't know. It takes a special kind of thing for me to want to record something. And a lot of the uh, the stuff that I've been writing about has just not been stuff that I've been like, yeah, let's record it. Let's do a video about it. Uh, so I've been slacking a little bit on there. Uh, and... But now we have SQL Server 2022, and it has rekindled my, my desire to record things. So uh, you're welcome. Thank you, Microsoft, for releasing SQL Server 2022. Um, and uh, I've been digging a lot into the parameter-sensitive plan optimization uh, in, in SQL Server 2022 because, uh, I mean, apart from it being a very cool thing that now we have this, like, new layer of intelligent query processing where uh, all of a sudden, like, we, we don't have the same, well, we don't, always have the same issue with parameter. We have new issues uh, to deal with, uh, like when it misses out on a, perhaps a potentially useful optimization. Uh, but anyway, uh, what now we have the, the, the at least the, the built-in heuristic ability to occasionally get some help with parameter sniffing when the optimizer deems a uh, parameter a quality predicate uh, sensitive enough or having th a sufficient skewness to, uh, to generate multiple plans. So what I'm going to do is uh, run this main query here uh, in a loop 10 times uh, with two different sets of input values. One is going to be a 1 and a 0 up here, and the other is going to be a 2 and a 184618 down here. So if I run this, uh, first we're going to clear out the plan cache. We're going to set, uh, we're going to clear all the data out of query store because I want this to be very clear, right? Let me clear it to make it shut up. And I'm also just going to make sure that everyone knows that my database is in compat level 160, which is the magical new SQL Server 2022 compat level. Uh, I mean, I guess it's old news if you're up in Azure, but uh, I don't know. I don't think people in Azure care, obviously. If they did, they wouldn't use Azure. So uh, we're going to run those in a loop, and it's going to finish pretty quickly because it's an export query tuner. Uh, even when I have uh, queries that, uh, that are parameter sensitive, they still manage to finish very quickly when I get my hands on them. But uh, the main stuff that we need to pay attention to in here is uh, if you look up here, we're going to have, and this is how you, you're going to know that your plans have uh, received the parameter sensitive plan optimization. You're going to see this option plan per value, and you're going to get some query variant ID um, attached to your query. Uh, right now, you only have three options, or you only get three plans uh, as, as part of this, right? So you certainly will only create three parameters, different parameter sensitive plans based on like bucketized values. And you can see those bucketized values if you look a little bit further over in the... Uh, in the uh, text of that hint where you see this predicate range, right? And so you'll have stuff at the low end of the range and you'll have stuff at the high end of the range and then you'll have stuff in the middle of the range which would be your third plan. I'm at the very top and very bottom of this so I only have the two uh, variant IDs. But if we scroll down through this, we're gonna see two distinct plans. Uh, really, they're, 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 they're very similar. <laughs> In a lot of ways, the only thing that's really different are these estimates over here, because uh, one of them will actually find 50,000 rows, and the other one will not find anywhere near 50,000 rows. It'll only find 518 rows. Uh, and you can also see, of course, which, uh, which uh, parameter predicate... Uh, oh, I didn't go over further enough. I'm goofy. I'm all out of practice here. Uh, you can also see which uh, parameter SQL Server decided was the sensitive one, the, the sad little lad who dropped his lolly and the leaves. Uh, and decided that you that's the one that uh, needed some extra help and attention. You needed a Kleenex and some spit on the cheek. But if you look through this stuff, uh, these two plans are basically going to go back and forth over and over again. It's going to be all query variant 2 and all query variant 3 going all the way down to the bottom, and that's the end of it, right? So these both executed uh, 10 times a piece to sort of in that loop. Now, where things get interesting, <coughs> and um, if you if you read my blog, you would have seen a post sort of recently about how uh, the parameter sensitive plan optimization, at least right now, at least as of this build, uh, this first uh, this first uh, CTP build, uh, kind of messes up uh, plan cache stuff because uh, when a store procedure calls a query and the query uh, executes, uh, it, it used to be, or at least it currently is, that you can figure out like there's a parent object ID that gets tied back from the query to the store procedure that call this you can be like oh this query came from this store procedure great uh, that that messes that up they all get weird different SQL handles everything's kind of a, a weird shamble over there 
uh, there's sort of a similar situation in Query Store. It's not exactly the same. I mean, it is the same with you can't tie statements back to the store procedure that called them, but there's a, an additional sort of bit of weirdness that I want to talk you through here. So what I'm going to do is execute these queries, and uh, there's nothing all that special or interesting about these queries. I'm not going to explain them because querying queries to our data is the hell on earth, and I feel bad for anyone who does it. I wrote SP Quickie Store so that you wouldn't have to do it because I care about you deeply as people, and I want you to have long and happy lives where you don't have to think about these things. So um, looking through query store data, we have three distinct uh, executions of uh, this query, which is weird because we only had two plans, but I'm going to show you where that third thing comes from. So if we blow this column up a little bit, and I wish there was a better way to do this without running some dumb substring parsing, uh, we'll see in this section, uh, that top plan, uh, that only, that ends its, the score descending uh, clause of the query. The two ones below it have the uh, plan per value, predicate range, blah, blah, blah stuff at the end of it. All well and good. Uh, where things get kind of interesting, though, is if we, uh, bah, bah, come on, move it, some scroll bars, not anyone's friend, uh, is when we look through others, other parts of this, right? So uh, we have query ID 123, plan ID 123, query text ID 123, okay, uh, fine. Uh, plan ID 1 doesn't show up in runtime stats, right? So just kind of like a silly run, like ex query on to get data out of the runtime stats view. Query ID 1 doesn't show up in there, right? We have, or sorry, plan ID 1 doesn't show up there. We have plan ID 2 and 3 in there, right? So these two are in there. Th this top one isn't. Down at the bottom, and I will explain this query because this one is relatively simple to explain. We're hitting a new view in SQL Server 2022 called uh, sys.querystore variant. And that is brand new. And this is the one that tells us when a plan had a variant or a deviant in it somewhere. What's kind of interesting here is that uh, we have query variant query ID two and three, right? So these query IDs would match up to these query IDs here. Query ID one isn't in there, right? Because it doesn't have that option plan per value stuff in it. We have parent query ID, which does match up to that. And then we have dispatcher plan ID, which only shows you one, okay? Here's where things get a little tricky. If we were to look for a plan, if we were, if we were to purely look for plans that have a variant in them, right, that were you know, d dispatched some other query plans, this is all we get back. And as far as I know, I'm the first person to talk about this. So, you know, go me, gold star, A plus, A for effort, all that stuff. Uh, we get this single operator back, multiple plan. Right? That's all we get back here. Not a whole lot of detail. And if we go look at the XML, there's a little bit more to see, but it, it's kind of just weird stuff. You know, I mean, it's all, you know, XML, which sucks to look at. But we have this parameter sensitive predicate thing in here. Uh, we have uh, a little bit of information about the uh, the you know, the query, like we can see what the query text is, just doesn't have the, the parameter sensitive stuff tacked onto it. Uh, we can see the index it got used. We can see the boundary values for the parameter sensitivity stuff. And we can see the uh, the predicate that was considered parameter sensitive, right? So we get, there's some there's some stuff in there, but it doesn't show us the whole execution plan. If we click on any other any of those other query plans, we'll get the, the plan back. Like so there was the one that has a missing index attached to it. Uh, and then this one down here is the one that doesn't have the missing index attached to it. So those are the two variants that we saw when I executed the other scripts. So you have to be a little bit careful how you uh, identify stuff in query store. Uh, obviously, you'd want to use the query variant query ID if you wanted to find the actual statements that had the varying plans in them. But right now, the, getting getting this dispatcher plan ID is just kind of useless. I wish there was another column that maybe had query variant plan ID in it so that we could say, oh, this query was attached to this you know, variant on the plan. That might be kind of nice. The other thing that's kind of interesting to look at in here is uh, some of the hashes, right? So uh, somehow, <laughs> these all have the same query hash which is interesting. Um, I mean, because the two of them have the option plan stuff at the end of them. So it almost doesn't make sense for them to 
have that, but maybe maybe that's not considered as part of the hash value in there. Maybe that gets maybe that gets sent in afterwards. I don't know. And then we have the the query plan hash, which you know I guess that makes sense because you know we have this one where you know the, obviously that just that single multiple plan operator is not going to hash out to the same stuff. But then uh, you know I mean the other two are the same because it's fundamentally the same plan. It's a blah blah key lookup. I mean the, the, there was no difference in plan shape or anything. So in situations where the uh, the plan vary the plan the, the different plans generated had different shapes different operators parallel not parallel stuff like that these would likely uh, these would likely vary. What what's interesting to me though is we have this query hash over here where they all end up being the same, but then quite obviously for uh, last compile batch SQL handle and statement SQL handle these are all very different values right this one's 02 blah blah 51 87 72 so these are all very different right these are all like just completely different SQL handles for things right these are all these are all way different values and even the statement SQL handles over over here obviously quite different values if the mouse will cooperate thank you very much Mr. Mouse you are so useful today almost as useful as my liver uh, these all have very different values right so like there's a lot of stuff that's just sort of spread out in here where you know before there would at least be like some semblance of uh, of, of like con of, it's like stuff you could figure out right you could like, like say oh the SQL handle for this query hasn't changed so this is where stuff gets a little bit trickier to identify and uh, kind of get get to the bottom of in here so I guess the the main thing here is be on the lookout for this these kind of changes be on the lookout for maybe your query store scripts not working or getting you the value data that you want back as you start getting these new views into things. The, obviously, this ditch, dispatcher plan ID that just shows you the multiple plan operators, not very useful, right? Like That's not a very good query plan for you to use. Uh, the parent query ID, likewise, that's just going to get you this thing back, right? Query ID one, right? That's just going to get you that you know, like that the, the initial query without any of the, the parameter sensitive stuff attached to it. But you really want to be using this as query variant query ID because this is what's going to get you uh, to these column to rather to these rows over here that have the more interesting plans. So, you know, be aware of this stuff. Uh, you know, as much as I love the idea of fixing parameter sniffing, uh, I wish that there was a little bit less uh, <laughs> sort of non nonsense and shenanigans going on behind the scenes with um, all of the, uh, the 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 different values that that, that uh, queries generate and stuff. I, I understand there has to be some separation. It wouldn't make sense for everything to be just kind of congealed in together. But uh, I do wish that there were uh, a little bit more uh, tooling or visibility into uh, some of this stuff. Uh, for example, I mean, like, like I said earlier, it would be really helpful to have a query variant plan ID in here to track us to the plan IDs that we care about, where there are variations, uh, and uh, you know, even in query store. Uh, you know, I, I talked about the, the plan cache earlier. Uh, even in query store, anything that gets called in the store procedure has a zero for a parent object ID when it gets a parameter sensitive plan op optimization. So it's going to be interesting uh, seeing if that kind of stuff gets uh, fixed or worked out as, uh, as the CTPs roll out and we get closer to uh, closer to RTM time. But anyway, sort of an initial observation. Maybe at some point in the future, this video will be completely wrong. Uh, that would be nice, but who knows? Uh, anyway. Uh, I'm going to go now because it's, um, yeah, again, it's seven, like 7.30 on a Friday. I'm going to, I'm going to go, uh, have, pour me a, a nice glass of something into my, my beer gut magazine, uh, mug. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll remember recording this video tomorrow. Maybe not. We'll see. I don't know. It's, it's all, it's all a coin toss. It's all up in the air. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, I will see you hopefully in another video soon you now the sql server 2022 stuff does have me uh back wanting to uh to actually record videos again so i don't know i'll have to work on that you have to brush off the rust and anything anyway goodbye